Okay, I'll go ahead and open it up. Uh, just how tough is it to, to see Austin go down again after everything he's, he's been through? Extremely tough. I mean, he's the ultimate competitor, teammate, stands for everything we, we stand for. Really, really hard to see him uh, you know, have that injury. Um, but I, I know he has the resolve and the fortitude that he'll bounce back. And it's unfortunate for him and for our team, but um, love him and what he has, you know, even what he's contributed this year, even though it hasn't been a ton on the field, is, is very significant. Any idea if uh, the turf played a role in that injury? No, I, I don't know. I mean, he got rolled up on. That, that's, you know, that was really what happened. I'm not sure how it related to the ground, though. But you, um, I know you have the next man up mentality, but as far as the offensive unit, uh, what kind of mental toll does this have? Listen, it's a very close knit group, especially in that O line group. So, right, everyone feels for Austin, especially everything he's gone through. But, right, I mean, Austin, he'll be the guy in there telling everybody else, let's go now, let's go. So, um, it's, it's the right kind of attitude to, to keep moving forward. Any idea with it, you know, when he might be able to, to return in terms of like spring workouts, OTAs, and things like that? Um, no, I don't have an exact timeline yet. You know, I know he's still consulting with doctors. I know there was a, uh, from what I recall, there was a phone call la last night, you know, that was going to trying to determine what we're going to be the next step. So still working on those next steps. Uh, in week one, Chandler Zavala played right guard. It seemed to play pretty well. Is there, when you guys are reshaping the offensive line, does this kind of give you kind of like a, a fresh slate with all these young guys that you have? Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for these young guys. And it is, uh, yeah, in some ways it is a fresh slate. Um, these guys are going to get an opportunity to play. So, you know, we have a plan in place now with, you know, with Austin down on how we'll move forward. And, you know, you guys will see how that will unfold over, over the week. Do you really want to say who's in the mix? I really don't want to say that at this point. Um, Frank, as, as a quarterback, just yourself, the difference between interior pressure and pressure from the edge and, and how disruptive both are in different ways. I'm wondering if you could kind of help elaborate. Um, you know, both, both any pressure is disruptive. Um, so depending on the concept that's being thrown, if you're throwing the ball outside the numbers and you get internal pressure, you know, you can take a quick step to the side and still deliver the ball outside. If you're trying to get something over the middle, in interior pressure, you know, is a little bit more disruptive. Same thing on the edge. If it's something's coming from the edge and you got you know, some outbreaking route, corner route, or something to the outside over here. And, um, you know, it can be disruptive. So some of it is in conjunction with where the where the ball's intended to go. From a, an injury standpoint in the secondary, it seems like a lot of guys are on the mend. Where are you at with JC, CJ, and uh, Jeremy? See how those guys do during the week, um, you know, how they respond to practice. And, uh, you know, again, that group, the whole group has been good and solid. So. Um, you know, anxious for everybody to get back when they can. We'll see how the week plays out. JC getting like this might be his week then? We'll see. You know, we'll see how he responds this week during practice. At the start of the season, guys have a lot of hope and optimism. Now at one and nine, you have guys that are frustrated. As a head coach, how do you balance the challenges with managing a one and nine team? I think it's, uh, you know, as hard as it is. And, and you have to deal with reality, so you can't act like, you can't act like this isn't happening. Um, but you can also yet still display uh, belief and trust in your players that you can lead us through this time. Um, there is something at the other end. We have to just keep fighting for it. Um, there's, there's plenty of football left this year. Um, let's take it one week at a time. Um, I think these guys have the right mindset. Um, nobody likes where we're at. We all, you know, we're honest about where we're at and where we want to go. Um, and I think we have the right attitude to take next steps. Go hasn't ahead. had a three-game road stretch at all at this point in the season. What is your approach, or is it at all different when you are preparing to go on the road for this long? At this point, other than practice and silent count, um, you know, more obviously going on the road. Um, you know, listen again, where we're at, it's there's a little bit of us against the world mentality. Anyway, that that can be a positive thing. You know, we have a lot to prove, home or away. Um, so. You know, this is this each week. You know, each week is an opportunity to be challenged. Um, you know, by the opponent we're playing. You know, Tennessee uh, they provide. You know, they're a well-coached team. You know, 
you know, Coach Vrabel well. They're, they're going to be well coached. They play physical on defense. You know, offensively, they want to pound it in the run game, got a good play action game, and they're always good on special teams. So um, we just have to focus on our execution at this point in the season. It's really about us and what we do. Frank, you have said uh, you're sticking with Bryce as head quarterback, a starter. Would this injury to Austin give you any pause along those lines? No. I mean, Bryce is our guy. Um, excited about um, you know the opportunities the last seven games that he has and that we have to make progress. We ha we're very you know we have a lot of resolve, determination to uh, to make that progress. We take it one week at a time. We continue to try to find ways and um, to to get that. And um, you know, want Bryce leading the way on that. Stephen Sullivan uh, has seen obviously an increase in playing time when he has been battling that shoulder injury. He's kind of a dynamic player. What does he allow you to do that maybe you wouldn't do with other tight ends that you've worked with previously? You know, he, he's he's a big frame guy, still you know big enough that he can, you know, he can block in line, um, but yet you get him outside the set formation and he feels like a wide receiver. Um, he can run. He's long. He's got length. He's a good route runner. Um, he's instinctive, um, but yet he can play tight end. So um, I really like our tight end room right now, the way they're playing. I think, you know, Tommy and Ian are, are really good players. Um, and then you add Sully to the mix. He, he brings, you know, uh, Tommy and Sully are both good blockers. They're both instinctive and, and, and good players in the pass game. Sully adds a little bit of the big play element and the speed. Really good to see Jeremy out there. You know, um, you know, th this is where you know. I know you guys have talked about how we're going to be better. The defense is going to be better. We're going to be better as a team. All these injuries we've had, especially on defense. Um, now these guys are going to start to come back, and you know, this week, next week, um, in the next couple weeks, um, this is going to make our team better and stronger. But good to see Jeremy out there. He, you know, he just has juice. As you know, he's a playmaker. Um, you know, I think he's had a chance to be on the sideline, watch what we're doing, kind of envision himself being back in the mix and what role he can play to help us take another step. Terrence Marshall was inactive last week. Is he not progressing as you, you know, project on the field? No, Terrence, you know, is a good player. You know, he's got speed. He can run. He, he's a very good route runner, good ball skills. Um, you know, with the mix of what we have, you know, Amir is our punt returner. You know, LaVisca is kind of our hybrid guy. You know, and then you know Thielen is our slot. Thielen's our slot guy. Mingo's our, you know, he's our Z. He's our he's our enforcer blocking. He's physical, and DJ is our X. And so when you have, so those are our top three. And then when you have four and five, you know, who are role players like Lavisca is and Amir as a punt returner, it's hard to get that sixth receiver active. So it's really nothing against Terrace. Uh, like Terrace, he's a good player. Um, He's made some good contributions this year. He's got some talent. Um, just sometimes it's a numbers game. Right. How is Hayden doing? Well better against Dallas uh, for the year. Um, really tough on first and second down. I know that's partly game script, but uh, going forward, is there going to be more of an emphasis on trying to run the ball more on first and second down and creating uh, more advantageous third down situations? Um, yeah, we're, we'll continue to mix it, right? I mean, uh, we do want to build off the success we had in the run game. Um, you know, so every game is different, and uh, as you know. So, um, you know, we, we want to find ways to be productive um, and to win games. So uh, always looking at what that looks like, how to, you know, what does being patient with the run game look like, how do we complement it with the play action stuff, um, you know, and then how do we lay it out over the course of a game. So those are week-to-week -week decisions, but always a very relevant question. And how do you feel like Miles has, uh, you know, come back, you know, obviously dealing with a lot of nagging injuries earlier in the year. How do you feel like he's done? Yeah, I think it's to Miles' credit, right? I mean, you know, he had a couple of weeks there where everyone was like, what's wrong with Miles? What's wrong with Miles? And nothing's wrong with Miles. I mean, you know, it's just sometimes you go to a couple of games, and I mentioned this a few weeks ago as a running back. It just happens as running backs or receivers that you could go a couple of weeks and not really be involved, and it feels like an eternity when in reality everything's fine. And Miles is a great player. Um, He's running really well right now. Really like the combination of those two guys back there. Let's wrap up with Bill and Joe. Um, just talking about the cut into your offensive line. Bradley's been the constant. His guys are shuffled around on either side of him. How how tough has that been on him? And 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 how has he managed to kind of 
keep things together. Yeah, really excited. I'm really glad for Bose to be there, be the anchor. Um, you know, he's the field general out there making all the calls, um, keeping everybody together. So um, he's done a phenomenal job with those guys, kind of, and especially young guys coming in there. So um, that's really what we were looking for him and that kind of leadership, you know, when we re-signed him uh, last spring. How is Hayden doing? Um, Hayden's doing well. Talked to him today. Uh, you know, he's making progress. Happy about that. Um, yeah, I, when I, my conversation I had with him this morning was really good. I think he's, he's heading in the right direction. Oh.